Hi! Welcome to Pollen Morphology Training Part 2, Apertures. Today, let's talk about apertures. In this video, we will provide some useful information about pollen apertures, such as what is an aperture? What are the different types of apertures? How do you properly measure a pollen aperture? And what are some other helpful morphological characteristics of pollen apertures? Pollen apertures. An aperture is an area on the pollen wall that appears morphologically different from the rest of the surface of the grain. Pollen grains typically have one or more apertures. These apertures function as the site of germination on the pollen grain. These apertures also provide useful morphologic information for pollen identification. Also, the position of the aperture on a grain can help the user determine whether a grain is in its polar or equatorial orientation. There are two common types of apertures that we will discuss today. Pores are apertures that are generally circular or elliptical in shape. Their morphology will be referred to as porate. Colpi are elongated apertures. Their morphology will be referred to as colpate. If both types of apertures are present on a grain, then the morphology is considered to be colporate. We will discuss other aperture types, such as sulcate and ulcerate, in a future training video. Let's look at some more examples of pollen apertures. Here are a few examples of porate grains. Here are a few examples of colpate grains. And here are a few examples of colporate grains. Determining grain orientation based on apertures. The location of an aperture on a pollen grain can be very helpful when trying to determine a grain's orientation. The equatorial orientation usually provides a direct view of the aperture. When viewed in the equatorial orientation, colpi typically run from pole to pole, perpendicular to the grain's equator. The ends of the colpi can be easily viewed from the polar orientation. Pores generally appear situated around the equator when viewed in the equatorial orientation. When observed in the polar orientation, you may not be able to determine the pore shape, but you can at least detect the presence of one or more pores on the grain. Colporate grains appear as a combination of the two aperture types, with the colpi typically running from pole to pole, with the pore situated around the equator. Here you can see an example of a colporate polar view. Polarity. Isopolar grains have identical poles and exhibit symmetry across the equator. Most grains can be classified as isopolar. Heteropolar grains are asymmetrical and exhibit uneven poles or uneven aperture placement. Spherical grains with no apertures or apertures that are evenly dispersed over the surface of the grain do not have a discernible pole. Therefore, polarity cannot be determined. Let's look at some examples of polarity. Here are a few examples of isopolar grains. Here are a few examples of heteropolar grains. And here are some examples of grains where the polarity cannot be determined. Aperture position. Once you are able to determine a grain's orientation based on the presence of apertures, you can further morphologically describe your grain based on the position of the apertures when observed in the polar orientation. For angular grains, the apertures may lie on the corner of the grain or they may fall mid-wall. For grains that are circular, elliptic, or lobate, this category of morphological characteristic would be considered to be NA or not applicable. 
Please take a moment to look at some examples provided for each category. Pour measurements. Now let's discuss how to properly measure a pour. First, you must determine the orientation of the grain. Then you are ready to measure. For the pour's polar measurement, measure the height of the pour just as you would take the polar measurement of a grain. For the equatorial measurement, measure the width of the pour across the equator. Here is an example of pour measurements. Cold bean measurements. Now let's discuss how to properly measure cold bean. Once again, you must first determine the orientation of the grain. To accurately measure a colpus, the measurement should be taken at the aperture's widest point. Here is an example. Colpori measurements. When colpori are present, both the pores and the colpi will need to be measured. The same methods of measuring apply. Be sure to take both polar and equatorial measurements of the pore. Also, be sure to measure the colpus at its widest point. Here is an example. Pore shape. Pores may come in a variety of shapes and sizes, making it a helpful morphological tool for pollen identification. The shapes generally range from circular or squared to elliptic or rectangular, or the pores can even be irregularly shaped or inconspicuous. Here are some examples of pore shape. Here is an example of a circular pore with an annulus. Here is an example of a concave pore. Here we have an example of an inconspicuous pour. And finally, here's an example of an irregular pour. Pour section. Observing a grain's pour section can serve as a useful tool for pollen identification. The easiest way to determine the pour section is by observing a grain in the polar orientation. Now let's look at some examples of pore section. Here's an example of a pore section with an operculum. Here's an example of a pore section with a thinning sex sign. Here's an example of a pore section with a sunken pore. And finally, here's an example of a pore section with an extruded pore. Colby length. Colby length is determined based on a visual estimation of the length of the colby from one pole to the other. The length may vary from anywhere from less than one third of the grain's height to the full length of the grain's height. Here are some examples of colby length. Colby margin. A colpus may be surrounded by an area that varies in its thickness or ornamentation. This area is referred to as margo, or the colpy margin. To the right, you can see an example of a grain with margo. Now here's an example of a grain without margo. Now let's talk about the shape of the colpi apex. The shape of the colpi's apices can be determined by observing the grain in the polar orientation. These apices can be classified as acute or round. Here's an example of each. 
Another useful identifying characteristic of Culpi would be the presence of Culpi opercula. A Culpus operculum is a structure that covers part of the aperture but is completely separated from the rest of the surface. A pontoperculum is a structure that covers part of the aperture but it is not completely separate from the rest of the surface because it still connects at its ends. Here are some examples. Colby constriction. Another helpful morphological characteristic is Colby constriction, where the colpus appears more narrow or pinched towards the equator. Here's an example of a constricted grain compared to a grain with no constriction. Poor colpus relationship. When a pore and colpus occur together, they have a poor colpus relationship, which may appear in a number of different ways. The cartoons on the right show the various poor colpus relationships that can occur. For the sake of simplicity, each of the options have been labeled numerically. Here are some examples of the most common poor colpus relationships. Option 1. Colpus divided by poor. Option two, colpus intersecting pore. Option three, pore within the colpus. Option five, constricted colpus with an inconspicuous pore. And option seven, constricted colpus with an intersecting pore. Join us next time for part three, morphological types for more information. Thanks for joining us. This concludes part two of our pollen morphology training series.